The C3 Corvette is a good sports car, but it's really not a great one either, and they can be hard to live with too. So when you buy older muscle cars, you know, it kind of comes with the territory, right? So that being said, I set out to change all that with my C3 by making some changes to bring performance and reliability in line with modern muscle. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the changes I made to my C3 to make it easier to live with, and then we'll compare it to its modern equivalent, a C8 Corvette. Okay, so let me give you a little background here. So I love my C3 Corvette. So it's been a great car, it's very stylish, has the classic muscle car look of the 70s, right? Uh, but that being said, I also have a C8 Corvette, which I was lucky enough to pick up here this spring. So I got one of these because I wanted a modern sports car that was basically easy to drive, meaning I could just go out to the garage, start it up, and head out. I didn't need to you know, have a special starting procedure like some of my hot rods do. There's also the technology that you get with a modern sports car that greatly enhances your experience, like your Apple CarPlay, your digital dash, cylinder shutdown to help with fuel economy. I mean, all those things add up, and there's just a lot of modern convenience that comes with you know, a modern sports car that you're just not gonna have in a classic muscle car. So that's the why behind me wanting to improve my C3 Corvette. And the goal was to make it at least as user-friendly as a C8. So when I say user-friendly, I'm not talking about performance. You know, I'm talking about the attributes that make the car fun to drive, that make it easy to drive. And if you improve those areas, you know, you're gonna wanna drive it more. Okay, I'm gonna start out by saying something I think a lot of people might find surprising. And that's that the single biggest thing you can do to make your C3 easier to live with is to install an overdrive transmission. So I say this for a few reasons, and uh, let's start with a little history here. So when this car was introduced, the standard final drive ratio of both automatic and four-speed transmissions from GM was one to one, meaning that for every engine revolution uh, turned in fourth gear or top gear, uh, the final drive out of the transmission was equal to that. So let's be clear, a one-to-one -one final drive ratio is not an overdrive. And by running this ratio out of the transmission, you're making compromises between performance with a higher rear-end gear set and having a car that's easy to live with, meaning something you can take out on the highway and you're not running excessive RPMs when you're just commuting in it or going on a road trip. If you install an overdrive transmission with a final drive ratio of 0.7 to 0.8, you are going to get the best of both worlds because you're going to be able to run a higher gear set in the rear end so you have the performance aspect of the car, but also you can drive the car on the highway and not run a million RPMs. So for the C3 makeover, I installed a Tremec TKO 600 with a 0.64 overdrive. And I run 370 gears in the rear end, and with that overdrive, I'm able to run right around 1800 RPM at 60 miles an hour. Now in my book, that's a huge win because 370s is a pretty tall gear set, right? It's built for fun, stoplight to stoplight. But with the overdrive, it can also take this thing out on the interstate and go on a road trip. So like I said, best of both worlds. Um, so something else to note, I bought my TKO 600 seriously like two weeks before the TKX was released and to this day I'm still bummed about that. But what the TKX is, is basically an evolution of the TKO transmission. It's got a smaller case and then Tremec made some changes to the synchros and the gears to help with high RPM shifting. But overall, you can't go wrong with either a TKO or a TKX in any classic muscle car. Another thing I'll mention is I bought my TKO 600 through Silver Sport Transmissions, also known as SST. And they're a great company to work with. And what they do is they buy transmissions direct from Tremec, and then they go ahead and make special kits that are curtailed for your hot rod. So when you buy a C3 Corvette kit, you're going to get the exhaust bracket for the exhaust right down the middle. You're going to get the speedometer cables. You're going to get the custom owning brackets to the cross member, right? And in the end, product then just bolts up exactly in the OEM location, and you can't even tell if you have an overdrive transmission in the car. So make sure you check out SST. And uh, lastly, I've been talking about manual overdrive transmissions. And of course, there's plenty of automatic overdrive transmission options out there too. And they're gonna achieve the same thing. And that's gonna be a C3 Corvette that is easier to live with. The standard engine that shipped in most C3 Corvettes was a small block Chevy 350. And this engine, it's been around a long time, and there's a million aftermarket mods you can make to this engine 
that are mostly focused on building more power. Like for instance, a different cam, different cylinder heads, different exhaust, etc. So while that's the formula to making your C3 really cool, it's not the formula to making it easy to live with. And if you want to make it easy to live with, there's one modification you can make that's above all the rest. And that's to install fuel injection. So for the C3 makeover, I did build a new small block Chevy uh, for the car. Um, you don't have to do that. If you have a mild 350 and it's running well, just installing an aftermarket fuel injection kit is going to make your car easier to live with for a lot of different reasons. So first, the technical reasons. Uh, they're real obvious, everyone knows them. A uh, the car will be easier to start, you'll get better fuel economy, uh, you'll probably have less carbon deposits because you'll run lean most of the time. However, it's going to be the intangible benefits that you get with fuel injection that you're going to appreciate even more. Um, a couple examples, uh, being able to go to your garage and start it and go. Uh, or going through a drive through or being stuck in traffic and not worrying your engine's going to start to vapor lock. Now at face value, you know, these seem like pretty minor things, right? But when you're driving a car every day, or if you want to drive it more, uh, things like that become pretty important pretty fast. And that's why I think it's critical you consider fuel injection if you want to make your C3 easier to live with. On the small block Chevy I built for the car, I installed an Edelbrock Pro Flow 4 setup. And I picked this setup for two reasons. Uh, the first is it's a multi-port setup, meaning I have a fuel injector for each cylinder on the engine. And second, I could get smaller 29 pound an hour injectors. So 29 pound injectors on a small block Chevy isn't really a uber performance application, right? However, running these smaller injectors does atomize the fuel much better. And as a result, you're gonna have much better idle characteristics with the engine along with better throttle response. And that's exactly what you want on a daily driver. In most cases to install fuel injection on your C3, you're gonna have to upgrade your fuel system to higher pressure. Um, and there's a few different ways you can do that. And for me, I just chose to upgrade the whole system, tank to the front. I did this because I wanted an in the tank fuel pump setup versus an external fuel pump. Um, because those, if you want them too low or too high, you know, they can have trouble drawing fuel and then you end up starving the engine. With an in-the-tank setup, you know, it's pretty hard for that to happen. So if you do decide to go this route, uh, you do need to plan to replace the fuel tank too. Uh, because most of these intake designs, you know, they like to have a baffled setup in the tank. And when I say baffled, what that is, is that's an area within the fuel tank where the fuel can't slosh away from the pump. And that keeps it fully submerged, whether you go up a hill, go around a corner, etc. And that's how you keep the engine from starving. Now I'm sure a bunch of you watching are wondering more about the motor that I built. And high level, it's just a replacement Chevy 350. Um, but that said, I do a, do a ZZ4 bottom end, which is a four bolt main. You really don't need it, but you know, if you're gonna buy a short block, you might as well buy a good one, right? Now, one interesting thing I did learn with fuel injection is you definitely can run a more radical cam. Um, so I picked a 224-230 intake exhausteration, and I thought that would be right on the limit of what would be streetable. And when I say streetable, I mean being able to run vacuum brakes. Um, so in reality, I'm fairly certain I could have run something in the 230, even maybe low 240 duration intake, and 240, 250 exhaust. And that would have been a really radical choppy sound. And I think I would have had enough vacuum to run this thing on the street too. No regrets, 224, 230 is just fine. But it's just to show you again, this is a benefit you get by running fuel injection. Okay, so moving on to the interior. So I did do quite a bit of sheet metal work to the inside of this car. And I'll just start off by saying, hindsight, I kind of wish I would have just left the original uh, dash as kind of crappy as it is. Because it's hard to meld uh, sheet metal with a, such a curvy interior and a curvy look from the 70s and make it look right. Now that being said, and aesthetics aside, uh, the new sheet metal did allow me to make a lot of changes that make the car easier to live with. So a couple examples. I added some front facing speakers uh, so I could hear the radio better. It seems minor, but really the radio in this car was never good and that definitely helps improve the radio quality or audio quality. Uh, I added cup holders, so the original C3 didn't have cup holders and I like having my coffee next to me. One of my favorite upgrades to the interior was a new set of speed hut gauges and these are modern GPS gauges meaning they use a GPS signal to calculate your location 
and then they can derive your speed. And with that, you get a lot of cool functionality, like you can do a zero to 60 time, quarter mile time. Uh, you have a digital odometer, like trip odometer, digital speed. Um, and those are again, those modern features are really enhance your C3 and give it more of a modern feel. And my favorite addition to the interior is adding a tablet. And I made sure when I designed the sheet metal that that tablet was front and center. And the reason I have one is basically the Edelbrock fuel injection kit. It uses a tablet app to communicate via Bluetooth with the ECU to tune it. And a side benefit to having that tablet is I can also run Google Maps and then I have navigation. Or I can say, hey Siri, and I'm able to text my friends. So again, some more modern conveniences uh, that make the car more enjoyable to drive. So to support these electrical upgrades to the interior, I did relocate the fuse box from underneath the dash to the center console. And I did that for a couple reasons. And first, uh, the location is so bad in the original C3. Um, aside from just changing fuses, once you try to rewire things, it's like good luck. It's just a rat's nest of wiring down there. And by moving this to the center console, you then have easy access uh, to your fuse box, your wiring, etc. So while I had the car part, it was also a perfect time to do some maintenance items that, you know, were things that didn't improve the car but needed to be done. So a couple examples, you know, I rebuilt the pedal box, so I have a nice smooth clutch to mate to my new overdrive transmission. I also rebuilt the steering column when I was rewiring the interior. Um, so a perfect time, if that's out, you might as well clean up the bearings, paint it, make it look nice, right? Uh, and on the topic of paint in the back, when I had the tank out, same same thought, right? How often do you take your fuel tank out? And the answer is probably never, or only if there's a leak, right? So while that was out, it was a perfect time to sand off some of that rust and put on a fresh coat of paint. Same with the rear bumper. Uh, on the topic of rear bumpers too, FYI, uh, the C3's rear bumper is one of the most complex bumper assemblies you're ever going to find. And mine was loaded with rust, uh, and it was a perfect time to, again, clean that up, paint it. Uh, before I put the car back together. Okay, to judge the final product, I compared it to my C8 in four different categories. And they are a comfort score, a road trip score, a performance score, and lastly, a maintenance score. So starting out with comfort, uh, I gave my C8 a score of seven out of 10, and my C3, eight out of 10. And I'm sure there's people's jaws dropping as I say that. And the reason I give it that scoring is, you know, the C8 interior, it's a little cramped, uh, more than I thought it would be. And actually my head actually hits, hits the top of the T-tops, right? If you lean your head back and I'm like about 6'1", I really wasn't expecting that. Whereas the C3, you know, it's a very laid back, comfortable seating position. And when you add in these new modern conveniences like a tablet, um, you know, my newer radio, you know, it's really a fun car to cruise around in. Definitely not as safe as the C8 because of that seating position, right? Uh, but that's how it was designed and, you know, on a nice summer day, it's, it's pretty easy to enjoy this car out on the open road. Okay, moving on to the road trip score. So a C8, I gave it a 10 out of 10. So there's tons of storage space in this car in spite of its smaller size. Uh, the lights work great. It's easy to see at night. The wipers work great. You know, it's just, it's a modern car that you feel comfortable taking anywhere and it's reliable too. Um, my C3, I gave it an 8 out of 10. Now you base that mostly on, on the space, there's not a ton of space uh, in that car for storage. But with the upgrades it made with fuel injection and that overdrive gear, you know, this car, I feel comfortable going cross country in if I had to. Uh, it, it'll get you there and it'll get you there in style. Moving on to performance, I gave the C8 a 10 out of 10. Uh, that should be no surprise to anyone. Um, this car just flat out moves. The, the base 490 horsepower engine is a complete beast. And you had traction control, and this thing both handles and it completely flies. Now the C3, uh, with, the, with the bigger cam I put in it with fuel injection, I gave it a seven. And it has no problems spinning the tires, but the, the one thing inhibiting a C3 that's definitely harder to correct is the handling. It just doesn't, it's never going to handle as good as CC8, and there's really nothing you can do other than redesign the frame or something, right? Uh, which is something I think most people aren't going to do. Okay, last category, maintenance. So my C8, I gave a score of 6 out of 10, and my C3, I gave it 9 out of 10. Um, so a little background, you know, the C8, like we've been talking about, it's a modern car, and with that, it's modernly complicated. So changing the oil on this car, it's a process. Uh, changing the transmission fluid and filter, uh, they don't even recommend doing that. They say bring it to the dealer. 
Uh, where's my C3? It's just got the tried and true 350 Chevy architecture. Um, so I put in new short block, it has new rings, and you add fuel injection to the mix. You know, this motor I just put in here should easily go 150, 200,000 miles. Okay, so if we tally up the scores here, I get a score of 33 for the C8 and 32 for the C3. And I'm, I'm sure some of you out there find this shocking, but I, I really feel comfortable in the scores, and I didn't sort of set this up like, if I give it this, I'm going to get this. I, I objectively picked scoring, and I added it up at the end, and, you know, I got these two on par with one another. Now, everyone's going to have a different perspective, because there's no one car that fits every person perfectly, right? However, through the eyes of a sports car enthusiast like myself, I hope this shows you that you can make some modifications to a decent car that are going to make it a whole lot better. I mean, I love the car more than I ever have, and it sucks because I have too many cars right now. i got to get rid of some, but I'm too attached to this car to ever let it go. Alright, well that's all I got for today, so why don't you leave me a comment, let me know what you think, and thanks for watching.